Hello to all my foodie friends. I'm Chef Dee and welcome to my healthy cooking show. I'm excited to bring you my supercharged vegan and vegetarian masterclasses. This 10 part series is brought to you by Bill TV and today sponsored by RK Health Solutions. You can now see me live in action, cooking and sharing all my delicious vegan and vegetarian recipes. I'll be showing you how to turn your favorite dishes into healthy and delicious guilt-free meals for you and your families. Today's masterclass is one of my signature Gujarati dishes made from Moringa drumsticks and a native Indian green vegetable called Parval, also known as the little pointed gourd. I have taken the best from my original recipes and will be showing you how to substitute the oils and the sugars and any other processed ingredients with supercharged healthy ones. Hope you will enjoy making this in your homes as much as we're going to enjoy making it together here. So let's start cooking. I'll show you the ingredients today and the ingredients we're going to start off with is chickpea flour, sesame seeds, roasted peanuts ground, we've got some shredded coconut, ginger, chilies, we've got pureed spinach, gor, jaggery, and finely chopped coriander stems. I've put this oil here, we're using olive oil today, and I've put it here just to show you how much we would normally be using in this dish. But today we'll be cooking without any oil. We've got all our spices here and we're going to start cooking. So I'll, I'll introduce you to the green veggies as well. So if we move over here, the green veggies we've got today are little pointed, that's the pointed gourd. We call them paraval. We've got drumstick, which I'll be showing you how to clean and get prepared. So right now, all I've done, I've got some prepared here. We've just put it in some water. So I'm going to show you how we prepare the drumstick. So first you start off with taking the end off. Now if you've got any part of the drumstick that's a bit, that needs removing, just make sure you do that while you're cleaning it. So we've taken the end off and we're pulling it back. So as we start pulling that back, you've got a very hard fibrous skin that we need to remove. Don't remove all of it because it will it'll stop the moringa from ke keeping its shape as well. So we want to cut it into a nice, about, about two inches long. So we've started again. This time I'm not going to cut all the way through. I'm going to hopefully pull that to the side. So we've got some more here. We're just going to carry on doing that. So therefore I'm peeling it away, taking off all that fibrous, hairy exterior, which we don't need although we won't be eating the edges anyway. So I'm going to carry on doing this. Try not to cut in the bumpy places because that's where the seed is. So there we go. We're just pulling that back. If you haven't cooked with Moringa before, this is a beautiful, delicious dish to start off with. It's got all lovely Gujarati flavors. You can even make moringa um, with a Punjabi base as well, onions and tomatoes. It will cook up beautifully. But this is one of those vegetables that people will see in a supermarket and probably say, what is that? And they'll walk away from it. These sticks are a powerhouse of nutrition. We should all add this into our daily diets. If we can have at least two doses of these moringas in our lives in a week, I'm telling you, this is a powerhouse of nutrition. We're looking at antioxidants, anti-inflammatory, anti-cancerous. The moringa tree is an amazing, amazing tree. Now I'm talking about the pointed gourd now. I'm just going to show you how we're going to just prepare it. We don't want to peel the skin off. We're just going to lightly scrape it back because it, it has this tiny little roughness which some people don't like that when they're eating. So we're just going to push that back and there you go, perfectly clean. In this particular dish the pointed gourd is going to be slit from the middle so I'm going to go through all of them, slice them through the middle. 
if you come across seeds that are really really tough and you can see that they they're not going to cook properly just pick those seeds out this is fine that's cut perfectly because sometimes you can get um, vegetables that are I mean especially in this part of the world unfortunately we get we don't get the best so if you live where these beauties are grown lucky for you so this ideally this is the kind of inside we're looking for meanwhile I'm just going to quickly switch my gas on the one that we're going to cook these in slightly right again I find that this is a little bit too tough and we don't want that coming in our mouths later on so we're just going to pick that out there we go right I'm just going to take this excess water out and we're going to go back to this pan just to check that it's heated up today I'm cooking in a, a system where we can cook with no oil minimum amount of um, water this cookware system helps me retain up to 93% of the, the nutrition that I'm going to cook in today so just to check that that's done I just want to check so just to check that that water is nice and bubbling I'm going to put this all into it as you can see I've not added two three cups of water it's all the water that's just been soaked in that's it so I'm going to leave that in there to steam it's going to steam in the goodness of its own moisture so we're not going to lose any goodness any nutrition so I'm going to let that now what we're going to do is make a start on the masala base for this so again we're going to check whether this is just check the heat on this just going to wait a couple of minutes for that to heat up a little bit more while we're waiting for these to heat up um, I'll let you know about next week's show don't forget to tune in I get a lot of people asking me about best cooking oils um, with a lot of research and a lot of knowledge we put together a small masterclass on the best cooking oils out there what we can afford obviously you don't want to go out and buy something ridiculously expensive something that we can all afford as well and it's got to be good for your health and nutrition as well which this is all about health and nutrition we're not here to cook unhealthy oily fatty foods we're here to teach you how to cook healthy how to retain all that nutrients which is so important to you so don't forget to tune in next week where we'll be answering all your questions and bringing the best oils to use and follow us like us subscribe to us and hit that bell icon so you know when we're up on screen first so let's get back to this let's check whether this is ready perfect now this particular dish if I explain to you in our Gujarati households to cook this dish I would be pouring all this oil into this we're cooking for about four to five people and we're looking about five to six tablespoons of oil here we're not going to we're not touching oil here so we're doing something that is going to shock you guys I'm going to pop mustard seeds with no oil so we've just put in about two pinches of mustard seeds and we're going to let that pop all by itself in the heat of this pan in the meantime let's I can smell this I wish you guys can smell this beautiful moringa steaming away it's created its own steam absolutely wonderful that will be done in about two to three minutes now and this little buzzer here is telling me the temperature in here is 86 degrees not a hundred not 150 only 86 degrees so it's not burning my food it's not killing my nutrients that is telling me we're nearly done so I'm just gonna have a quick look at this because we don't want to overcook it it's gonna go into the actual curry as well so I'm just gonna press this I'd say another about three to four minutes right and we're going to put the heat up for our 
mustard seeds to pop and if the camera can see the it's already jumping away I've not had to use any oil they're already jumping away in this so I'm going to add my jeera to this now so we're going to lovely roast the jeera nice and brown again no oil I don't even need to mix it to be honest but uh, I think it's just a force of habit but uh, let that roast I'm going to reduce the heat back to number two we're, we're cooking on an electric stove at the moment you can do this perfectly on your gas as well you have no problem so as you can see this is roasting lovely nice and golden brown already has taken less than a couple of seconds now we don't want to miss out on this heat now I'm just going to take it off the heat slightly just pull it towards me because the electric stoves will carry on the heat now in here we're going to add now this is going to make everybody cough we're going to add about a tablespoon of green chilies crushed green chilies a tablespoon of ground fresh ginger <coughs> already making me cough because we've got no fat in there but that's perfectly fine we're going to cook this through put it, going to put it back on the heat so we're cooking the masala through as you would normally with your oils and your ghees and your fats but today we're doing it with nothing So that's cooking through nicely the next ingredient I'm going to pop in here is ready roasted peanuts we've got about a cup of peanuts here I'm going to put three quarter cup of peanuts in here now peanuts as you know has its own oil content so that's going to release all its oil as well So as it's already roasted peanuts I don't need to cook it through or re-roast them saving me lots of time increasing all the flavor after this stage we're going to add a cup of ground chickpea flour called besan as well so we're adding that whole thing in now normally again like I said this is one of those things that nobody would even attempt to cook without oil because instantly they would think well this is going to stick its flour on a pan and yes it will stick but it won't stick tremendously so we're going to keep mixing it meantime we we'll quickly add our rest of our dry ingredients teaspoon of turmeric teaspoon of ground cumin powder teaspoon of ground coriander powder as you can hear my cookware is uh, whistling at me so it's telling me it's really really hot in this I'm going to switch it off I'm going to add my finely chopped um, coriander stems We're just cooking this through I'm going to check the temperature it's still on low I'm going to lid it for about five minutes our veggies in here I've switched the heat off they're going to finish off in there beautifully so while this is cooking in there I'll show you the rest of the ingredients that we're going to put in today today it's going to be a good you green curry so we've got pureed spinach baby spinach our sweet element is going to be jaggery again I try my best not to use any kind of sugars so we'll be using jaggery today because you can't make a Gujarati curry with no balance of sweetness so unfortunately as Gujars we love our, our sweet in our food but if we know how to do it correctly you can't get it wrong let's have a quick look at this again now what I'm going to do with this is take two to three teaspoons of water just to encourage the steam because we haven't put any oil we still need to cook this chickpea flour 
we can't let it stay raw so a little bit of water will encourage the steam generating in this cookware system so let's let that cook right this has been cooking for about two to three minutes and the steam has incorporated so the chickpea flour is cooking away nicely I could smell the cooked chickpea flour we're going to add some sesame seeds to this I'd say about two big tablespoons full as you can see it's sticking at the bottom but it's nothing to worry about still perfectly fine right to this we're going to add our delicious green puree spinach puree and all I did was just a cup of fresh baby spinach just pureed it in a blender with about two to three tablespoons of water so again that's, that's the amount of moisture that's gone in here so everything's going to lift up from the bottom adding to the flavors because nothing's burnt now to this we're going to add our cooked I'm just going to reduce this to number two we're going to take our cooked I'd say partially cooked veggies so just bear with me a second I'm just going to take this handle out and these veggies are going direct into my masala so as you can see there's no excess or, um, water oil anything there's no steamed water that I'm chucking out everything is still inside the vegetables so we've, we've lost no nutrients or nothing just going to put this away coming back to right we're going to give this a little bit of a mix and as you have seen I've not added any salt yet but we're going to add the salt now at this stage two teaspoons of Himalayan pink salt again if you're going to salt your food then go for the good quality salts give that a little mix now because of the moisture in the vegetables the chickpea flour has just stuck to it so at this point we're going to add about three cups of water because this is a dish with gravy so we need to start making that gravy and we're looking at about 10 minutes in total the drumsticks will become lovely and soft and you can just break them with your fingers so you've tried a Thai green curry today you're going to try a good green curry take off all this excess masala put that back in as you may have noted I've not put the jaggery in there yet a little bit later on so let's lid that and let that cook so if you like what you're seeing so far don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell icon and be the first to see us so stay tuned right let's have a quick peek at this it's just about done it's cooking away beautifully now this is the time we're going to add the jaggery we're looking at about three teaspoons and we're going to add some desiccated fresh desiccated coconut we'll be using some of this for garnishing as well so if you can see this any closer you will notice that it's still got a lovely shine on top everything's cooked through beautifully we've got a fantastic gravy happening here and we've not used a drop of oil and we've cooked it at less than 100 degrees heat so I'm just going to put that lid back on 
We're going to reduce the heat completely now and that jaggery will just melt nicely. Okay. While the jaggery is melting, I have switched all the heat off. It's just melting in the heat of the pot. Just going to get some coriander ready for garnish. I'm going to leave the tops whole. There we go. That's just ready for garnishing. Get our plate. And we're ready for plating. So as you can see, this is still bubbling away. So we've got the veggies right in the middle. The beautiful Moringa drumsticks. So we can get some gravy. So we've got our beautiful fresh desiccated coconut. A little bit of sesame seeds. And our chopped green coriander. And there we have it, our delicious Guju green curry. So if you've enjoyed watching me make this wonderful Guju green curry today, don't forget like and subscribe and hit that bell icon and be the first to watch our exciting masterclasses. So join me every Monday at 6 p.m. with new exciting recipes and let's have fun cooking. If you make this at home, don't forget to share some of your pictures with me. Tag me at Chef D Veg and I'll give you a shout out when I do my live videos too. Recipes are in the description below. If you have any comments, if you have any questions, pop them down below and we'll get back to you. So see you next week. Bye bye.